we have got here is from the base right through to the tie down straps. All the different sections on my right side is full depth honey production hives and on the left is nucleus hives. On the far side you'll see little ladders on the floor of the base that is telling me that the rises are too deep. The next one to the left is a vented base that will only last about three or four times through the irradiation plant before it falls apart. I have a couple of experimental hives. I find too much debris or debris on the floor on the ground, which I consider can be a problem with small hive beetle, wax moth grubs or other bees robbing the remnants, so I prefer solid bases, which is a dead material and does not rot. I make all my own equipment with the exception of frames and excluders and my risers for my bases I like to have between 10 and 11 millimetres. The small mounds that can be seen on this particular base tells me that the risers were too high or too deep. This here is a nucleus base. This base is a purchased one and I like to have my rails running from front to back, not across, as you've got more support on your stands. I like to have my entrances with what I call a 707 landing board. It's an extended area for when the heavily loaded nectar carrying bees come into land, they don't miss it. So on top of, top of that you've got your, you've got your first super, that, that, that's, your, that's your brood box. Uh, we'll, we'll just go through this quickly from now on then. So, so on, on top of, it, of your base you have your brood box, that, that's, a nuke, that's a nuke box that goes on your nuke. Then you've got your ex different types of excluders. There's a whole range of excluders. That we find the wire ones are the best, but you've got to be very, very careful when you're working your hives, especially with, with, your, with your hive tool, so that you don't spread those wires. If you spread those wires, you allow the queen to get through, all hell breaks through. It'll take you two or three hours to find that queen. And sure as eggs, you'll be on the last bloody frame that you look at. Every Here you time. see a plastic excluder, also a wire excluder. They're about half the cost of what the, what the metal ones are. This is one that's been cut down. That's for a five, one of our five frame nukes. These here that you see here are four frame nukes. Uh, so uh, for the one person that's only got one or two hives, the plastic excluder would probably be efficient. You've got to make sure that your, your queen is not up the top Where of the frame. the excluder is. Otherwise, if she's up there, you can squash her in an instant. I consider that they are more hassle than what they're worth. So, so that, that's your first one, then you've got your excluder, so you can't, the queen can't get above into your honey supers. Then you've got your next super, under super with, with a sticky or, or foundation, and you can take the whole nine frames off in one, one foul swoop. That, that's been the radiation plant. All my honey production hives are numbered, the, the supers and the frames for the barrier system. I've been using the barrier system for over 30 years. If supers are not irradiated, there is a lot of extra work required to check small hive beetle, larva and wax moth grubs every seven days before they're put back on the hives. Here you see a whole range of different types of lids. This lid has four one inch holes in it or 25 millimetre and I consider not sufficient for Queensland climate. These lids here are my design, 1985 vintage and uh, I've, I've, I haven't lost a hive through a small hive beetle since, uh, since the incursion in 2000. That, that, that's a, that's a stand, standard sort of thing. Why do you put the mesh on the outside? So well, logic. Getting back to logic. You put it on the inside, the bees will popularise it. What, what they will do is they, they will popularise this inside here and you just get your hive tool and just cut it straight out. No, the occasional one will do it, depending on, on, on the hybrid uh, queen and, and bees. Now we've also got these here. This this is what we call a lid come base. So we, we can we can get out, out the road so and see. So so we, we can have we can have a we, we can have a nucleus hive. We'll do it down here probably. Right, so we can have a nuke with, with, with an entrance facing that way. We can go up the second story with another nuke and a queen 
facing the other way. When we're in Queens, I can have up to 12 separate nukes on my 1800 stands. That's four by three high. So this, this is a For transferring a nukes loop. from one site to another site or when they are purchased. Bees can generate a huge amount of heat and if they do not have sufficient ventilation they can uh, die within a very short period of time. And of course the last but not, or not near the last is, is your rain hoods. And these, these are 100 millimetre longer than what your, your front and back so that you don't get rain in. And just a touch wider than what the, the lid is. That, that's, one, that's one for your nukes and, and like the last but not least is, is the M lock. We use M locks to tie everything down with. Because if you're, if you're doing three and four high, you can't rely on stones, otherwise the wind, especially yeah. if you're out in the open, and, and, and your hive will split. You put that over the rain. Yep, it goes, yeah, it goes right around the whole lot. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to my channel to help it grow. Thanks for watching. Thank you.